To strike a balance, Matchstick Men offsets its big performances with subtle yet effective aesthetics. For reasons I can't say for sure, uh, uh... Matchstick Men is one of the few films that continues to poke my brain since I saw it initially. I can identify what intrigues me about Matchstick Men, but I cannot uncover why it intrigues me. Back in 2003, when Matchstick Men was released, I saw it in theaters. At that time, I was an impressionable media arts student and I was intrigued to see this for two reasons. One, it looked like a light film about quirky con artists. And two, Ridley Scott had directed it. And although my expectations were satisfied on both those fronts, the way in which they were satisfied completely blindsided me. Being marketed as a light crime story, Matchstick Men certainly catered to my false sense of romanticism around sophisticated, non-violent, white-collar crimes. The acts themselves, in the film, are intriguing in their design, but the type of characters in which they attract are equally appealing. Certain character traits, like being smart or clever, naturally have a home with a story about con artists. Their jobs require them to be that way. Yet for some reason, the eccentric personality trait continues to be recycled in the stories of confidence men. Why is that? For obvious reasons, they need to be appealing in order to dupe their targets. But why then, when we, the audience, are privy to their scam, are we also duped? Logic would suggest that we shouldn't, but our hearts often speak differently. This leads us to the nature of con men, but more deeply, gets to the overall nature of character. The nature of our characters, or at least our two initial male characters, align in terms of their on-the-job charisma, yet in virtually any other facet, they couldn't be more different. Where Roy is careful, Frank is compulsive. Where Roy is moral, Frank is greedy. Where Roy is clean, Frank is dirty. Hey, Mike, would you wipe that thing off when you're done with it? Wipe the receivers. Wipe it off. Okay. How's that? You like that? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, okay. okay. And so forth. They are polar opposites in several ways, and yet, here they are as partners. Fitting together like a yin-yang, they complete each other as a successful con team. Perhaps it is that teamwork that wins this duo over for us. This may be true, although Roy's code as a con man surely has a big role to play. Moral codes aside, I believe it more simply goes back to how charming these characters are. We're more accepting of shady behavior given their charm. This, coupled with clever follow-through, gives way to admiration. And on top of that, it helps to hoodwink a baddie who's worse than you. Not only does this make our bad good guys more righteous, but also justifies their actions, making it more palatable. When we're introduced to Angela, we're given a palate cleanser. As a clean slate to this world, she's thrusted upon us and Roy in the true nature of a teenager. Her very presence brings a chaos to Roy's carefully tailored world. This would be problematic, however, as their relationship evolves, it becomes clear, like Frank, Angela is Roy's yin to his personal yang. Between this trio, Roy is obviously the center point by which all problems gravitate towards, being our main character. However, it is Angela who embodies our perspective by being the straight man, or straight woman in this case. Alison Lohman does a superb job with balancing a character who is both rebellious and innocent. Her performance is so convincing we accept her faults as the true nature of a teenager. Her charm, unlike Roy and Frank, stems from being truthful and sweet. I thought you weren't hungry. I'm gonna get wet. Might as well go swimming. <laughs> now, because our perspective is more closely aligned with Angela, it is harder to be in the headspace of Roy. Both the manic delivery of Nicolas Cage and the visual perspective of Ridley Scott's direction 
puts us in the unfamiliar shoes of Roy, while making it starkly jarring. This one-two punch encapsulates what we'd imagine OCD, or agoraphobia, feels like. Dodie Dorn's jump cuts also help in conveying this feeling, and by combining all of these together, we empathize with our hero in the only accessible way we can. Overwhelming at times, as Cage and Scott can be, the fascinating counterbalance to their chaotic presentation can be found in both the costume design and production design. Like the overall aura of Matchstick Men, the aesthetics keeps things light. The best example of this can be found in Roy's house. With both very little decoration and next to no color, Roy's home is practically a blank slate. This is curious for a man who dabbles with identities professionally. His home, where he is physically removed from that aspect of life, oddly lacks an identity. Even when he's off the clock, his wardrobe is plainly ordinary. It is almost as if he is ready to jump into a character at a moment's notice. That, or he merely hopes to blend into the background should the need arise. Either way, it is a complete contrast to the chaotic elements of Matchstick Men. In keeping with the light aesthetic, much of Matchstick Men is lit with what appears to be natural light. Much of this film takes place outside, yet even when we're inside, light sources are from the exterior. I'm not sure why this is, but it conveys an unconscious feeling of truth in a world filled with lies. I'm also unsure why the score sounds the way it does. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy Hans Zimmer's score. It just isn't what I would have expected from a film like this. Switching between jazzy xylophone. French accordion. And the occasional crooning. This town. The music of Matchstick Men feels light and perhaps out of the 60s, but it works. Once again, I'm going to leave before I spill too much. There are some things which I've purposely left out, i.e. Sam Rockwell being very Sam Rockwell. That is, for you viewers who wish to watch my videos for the recommendation. And Matchstick Men is certainly worth recommending. For equal parts in front of and behind the camera, Matchstick Men deserves more credit than it's ever received. With choices both big and small, it is an enigma. An enigma I cherish. And that's no lie.